Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King and I'm going to be giving you a new series today that is done by the Omnipresent Sage. I'm going to be leaving the link down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. But today I'm going to be giving you What If Naruto Was A Badass Slash Genius Part 1 guys. Get this one to 100 like as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and comment down below and tell me what you think and if you want me to continue this series guys and I do hope that you guys enjoy. And I'm going to be posting something new today over on Anime King 2. So stay in tune for that and I hope you guys enjoy. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you're hearing my voice. And you enjoy the videos on both Anime King and Anime King 2. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button. And become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new guys. I'll be replying and talking back to all of you. So without further ado, let's begin this new episode. Begin the intro. The village had seen better days. Hatred, unbearable hatred, was birthed when the Kayubi appeared in a poof of smoke and went on a killing spree. It was summoned by a mad Uchiha. The only thought of destruction from the beast as it lashed out at Konoha that had been seven years ago. Konoha held on to the hatred of what the Kayubi did as it never let it go. The world had turned against Minato wishes instead of celebrating with the hero. They turned against his wishes and they turned to thoughts of vengeance yet powerless to do anything. As most of them thought, who cares what a dead man think? The fort Okage was dead, he couldn't feel what they were feeling. And all that hatred pushed off to Naruto Uzumaki as in all his life he knew that Konoha hate him. Despite all the love that his mother gave him, all he learned to know was hatred. He saw it every day of his life, every nightmare that he had. For the past 7 years, Naruto has been dodging bullets of dead glares and the curse word sent towards him. Each time he walk around the village, he just brings up the hatred that the people have lying dormant within them. Life has not been easy for him. He was forced to be adult. He was forced to grow up as he had to understand things that most kids his age did not know. All because of one decision, one foolish person made. Minato had cursed him and his mother, life, by choosing to make him a Jinjulki and then he went and died. His mother always tell him the story on his birthday. The story of the day he was born, where the nine tail wreaked havoc on the village. It was some cursed fate that the day he was born, that mass fool ripped the Kayubi out of his mother and make it attack Konoha. Naturally, being Konoha leader, his stupid father decided to seal a bitch inside of him when he was born. Worst of all, he pathetically died, leaving him with his mother, the only person who truly cared for him. No one cared who he was related to. As long as he was Uzumaki Naruto, the son of Kushina, and the Jinjulki of the Kayube, they will always curse his existence. As his mother was forced to watch this happen, seeing the people of the village, how many hate glares they send at her son. As Naruto didn't care about his pain, that didn't bother him most of the time. But his mother's pain was different. For her sake, he had to grow. Because of his mother being in pain, he had to learn to hate two things. The Uchiha who started this all by bringing out the Kayube and the ignorant monkeys of Konoha. As Naruto was currently standing on the top of the Hokage's monument with dark blue pants, he had on a red shirt with the Uzumaki swirl on the front in white as he had on dark blue shinobi boots with bandages wrapped around his wrist as his spiky blonde hair blue and his blue eyes looked over the village as Itachi flashed beside Naruto as he was wearing his Anfu mask. Things hasn't been great for the Uchiha's seeing that it was reported it was a Uchiha who had let the 
nine tails go on a rampage so people are looking at the uchiyas differently now they dealt a major blow in people trusting them blaming them for the attack as itachi glanced at the boy beside him he respects shisui but there was no one he respected more than this boy he made this like the boy obvious no love for the villagers but the boy had the war heart of a shinobi itachi has never seen him cry itachi has never seen him look weak and vulnerable despite what the people of the village say and the way they look at him he always came up looking strong with a mass of defiance he was just seven he was insulted every day of his life by these people of the village but itachi has never seen the boy shed a single tear itachi had questioned naruto about this once but the answer that he got back was his mother had cried enough there was no need for him to cry there was no need for him to be sad or weak he wouldn't let his mother continue going through his pain this boy was far different from his brother his little brother was spoiled a baby he was no naruto naruto had yet to kill but itachi had no doubt that naruto wouldn't even flinch if someone got killed right in front of his eyes how he wished that his brother was like naruto strong and powerful and that look of determination perhaps it was because sasuke was too sheltered he had everything that he needed naruto had to fight in the lion's den in order to feed he had to fight for everything itachi respected that he may have graduated from the academy at seven but he was no naruto his younger brother was already in the academy naruto had yet to join they let you out so soon today naruto said breaking itachi from his thoughts my assignment were completed itachi said the sight is rather pleasant as he looked over the village depends on where you're looking naruto said you should come to the anvu hq with me i can simply say that you're my apprentice and wish to join the anvu as itachi was an anvu captain as he believed naruto could learn a few things a little appealing but no thanks i have no interest in becoming an anvu naruto said as he knew exactly what being anvu meant and he had no desire to live and fight and die for this village not even in his worst nightmare in the past few months i have not been able to honor our meeting because of the overload of work i have to do for the third okage and danzo itachi said i also have my responsibilities as a member of the uchiha clan as naruto turned and looked at itachi your love for konoha truly holds no bounds no wonder your family is envious i am a shinobi of this village my loyalty is sworn to this village it's only natural that i love it yes but there should be a limit konoha did not brought you into this world a uh, uchiha did and i will not be that long away from my mother she needs me naruto said my mother will protect her when we're away itachi said and by the way she was a joni she doesn't need a brat to protect her in your current state you cannot protect anyone naruto if someone like me decide to attack your mother what can you do you can't even land a finger on me naruto clenched his fists as he thought itachi was right i will tell her about it he said come said itachi let us get some lunch before heading to a training ground later that day my attempts in the fireball are pitiful naruto said as the two of them walk to the uchiha compound sasuke did better than him in this area and that bothered him greatly your progress is nothing to complain about naruto unlike sasuke you had to learn to convert your chakra nature into fire type your nature affinity is wind so fire based jutsus would be difficult that may be so but i hope to be done by now naruto said i should get the third okage to teach me wind manipulation you're more of a fire person and you can't offer me anything useful naruto said itachi took no offense in those words he wasn't a wind user after all would he be able to do so he does have a lot to do itachi said depends on how i act naruto said as he fell silent as itachi shook his head naruto really took advantage of sarutobi's good nature when the opportunity showed itself where the old man was always more than willing to help naruto he felt guilty for failing to make naruto's life better and giving into naruto's demands free his soul a bit the two slowly made their way to itachi's house where they were going to have dinner together with the uzumaki as they did every friday for the past three years 
Nissan, Sasuke said, as he saw his brother showed up. You're a little late today. Itachi smiled slightly. I was a little busy, he said. Just then, Naruto came up behind Itachi, making Sasuke frown. As Sasuke noticed the bruises on Naruto, were you out training with him? Sasuke asked, as Itachi nodded. As Sasuke folded his arms across his chest, as he poofed out his cheeks. You never take me to the training field, Nissan. You're always out with him. As Itachi stepped forward and ruffled Sasuke here, I will take you tomorrow, and it will just be the two of us. Really? Sasuke shouted. As Itachi gave a small nod as he walked past him. Sasuke, Naruto said. Has my mother arrived yet? No, Sasuke said. As Naruto didn't say anything as he turned and went towards the exit. As Sasuke knew that he was going to wait for his mother outside. After Naruto disappeared from his sight, Sasuke smiled as he sped towards his brother's room to get some alone time with Itachi. They didn't get enough of these moments these days, especially with Naruto around and Itachi working for the Anvo. It didn't start like this. Things were good for him at first, but it changed when his father permitted Naruto's mother to move into the compound after some villagers had harassed them by breaking the windows on their house. Since then, the two Uzumakis spend most of their night time in this house. Sasuke, Mikoto call, seeing our younger son speeding past the kitchen. Is Naruto waiting outside for his mother as Sasuke stopped and came back as he nodded. What did I tell you, Mikoto said. Sasuke frowned but did not repeat what his mother had told him regarding Naruto's behavior. But mom, Nissan is home and I want to spend some time with him. Mikoto raised her finger. No but, say so chan Go spend some time with him. You will have time with your brother after dinner. Fine, Sasuke said. There is no need to force yourself, Naruto said, as he came into view with his mother beside him. As Sasuke then turned back to his mother, can I go now, he asked, as Mikato nodded. Don't take too long, tell your brother to hurry up as well, she said, as Sasuke was already up the stairs. As Kushina smiled, as Mikato spoke, that boy really loved his brother. As Kushina walked over to Mikato, at least, you don't have your son following you wherever you go whenever he get the chance. Mikato smiled as she looked down at the small form of Naruto. He has changed you know. Two years ago he couldn't be away from your sight without an hour and not go hysterical as it didn't matter that the blonde was right there with them. As Kushina chuckled at those memories, remind me to get Itachi a sword, thank him for changing him a bit. The next day, Kakashi looked to his left as Naruto was there as the both of them were at Ichiraku ramen. As Kakashi glanced at Naruto, he knew Naruto saw him. Being one of the most hated person in Konoha, he always kept an eye out and knew when people saw him. Even though he couldn't take on a full-fledged shinobi, he will never make a civilian defeat him. As Kakashi saw it before, two grown-ass civilians tried to attack him, but Naruto was easily able to subdue both of them. But when it comes to Kushina, she wasn't afraid to rip someone intestine out if they glared at her son too harsh or worse if they insult him by calling him a demon in her very presence as she had killed two people for insulting her son and spitting on him as she came to the horrified site and she went berserk and tear them to pieces with her chakra chains when are you going to join the academy kakashi said the others in your age group have already joined the academy sasuke started last year I don't want to Naruto said. It's not necessary for me to join the academy. It won't offer me anything in life. You can't become a shinobi if you don't go through the academy, Kakashi said. I don't have to be a shinobi to protect my precious people, Naruto said. Well, Sasuke will hop into all of the glory at the academy. Don't you know? He's already been seen as a genius in the class. As Kakashi looked over at him, as Kakashi knew if Naruto had went to the academy, he will far outclass Sasuke in any form of skills. As when it comes to their age group, Naruto was one of the best. Naruto simply shrugged. He can go ahead and take all the glory. It's good for the Uchiha. Academy glory doesn't help me protect my mother, but being strong enough to defeat any enemies, that is what will help me protect her. The only person that could make him go was Kushina. She had talked to him about it, but she has never went that extra mile to make sure he would go. Kakashi, Naruto said in a quiet tone. Itachi wished me to follow him 
in the path of Anvu. As Kakashi throne, the life of Anvu was full with secrets and a lot of hardships. However, for Naruto who had went through a lot of this already, it could be good for him as he wanted to become strong as soon as possible and the academy wouldn't make him that strong but Anvu will. What do you think Kakashi asked, feeling that it was better to hear Naruto's opinion before give his own. It will help me mentally. Let us be honest, my life will only become messier when I grow up. So, I need to have a physical and mental strength to deal with everything. Working behind the scenes with the Anvu will develop me in all ways. But I don't want to be an Anvu. Itachi said I don't have to be one. I just have to learn a few things from him. Secondly, it will rob me of my time with my mother. I despair of thinking to leave her in this hell hole for too long by herself. I am wounded that you don't trust me enough to protect your mother, Kakashi said, as he was both joking and serious. Naruto knew that Kakashi was the one protecting his mother during the time that she carried him, so he should have a little faith in him. As Naruto gave a simple response, she is my only family, I have nothing else. As Kakashi understood, if anything ever happened to Kushina, he would see a side of Naruto that is just dark. As he knew that Naruto would probably release the beast to tear through the village just to cause death and suffering. As she was the only thing in touch with him really. Naruto was a kind of a loner and Kushina was always there for him. That is why he is this way. As it was a concern that Naruto didn't care a damn about this village. As if he come to his mother he would do anything. In the Anvu HQ. Naruto was marked as the S-rank flight risk. Even the Saratobi couldn't deny that. No matter how he loves the blonde, the only reason why Naruto was here is because his mother didn't want to abandon the village that her husband died for. And regardless of the treatment they received, they were secure in Konoha. Out there, they would be on the run from enemy shinobis. As a 14-year-old Amy came over with another bowl of ramen, as she looked at Naruto, as she shook her head slightly, the seven-year-old boy was always hanging around people that was old enough to be his father. He never had any friend his age. He was always eating with Saratobi. If it wasn't him, it was Kakashi or Itachi. Or sometime, it would be his mother. And there was a rare moment that he came in here with Jiraiya. But it would be awkward silence. The curtain was moved as someone stepped in the ramen bar. As the person ruffled Nerta's hair. As Nerta turned around that smile. As it was Kushina, as Kakashi gave her a eye smile, hello Kakashi she said. As she then looked at Naruto with a warm smile, hey mom what are you doing here he said. Hurry up and finish he said. It's time we go buy you some new things to wear. As Naruto quickly nodded, as Kakashi smiled, seeing Naruto acting like a normal child in front of his mother, as it was refreshing to see Naruto smile. Well I'll leave you two alone said Kakashi, as he paid for his meal and headed off. I am so jealous of you, said Amy. You can get Naruto to show all kind of emotion, but I can't even get him to smile. As he came here every day, and she has never made him smile before. Well, I am his mother. A mother know her child best, said Kushina. As Kushina just smiled at Naruto, as she was happy she could raise her child. Several years ago, she watched Minato seal the Kayubi inside of him, as she was holding it down with her chain. The dead demon consuming seal cost Minato his life. Even though that was very sad for her, she was glad that she was still here to protect her son and make sure that he would always be okay. Minutes later, I don't want these pants, Naruto said, as he was glaring at the red short pants that his mother was trying to make him wear. He come to realize if he don't start saying no, his mother is going to make him wear a dress one day just to embarrass him. But Naruto-chan, they will look good on you. Don't you want to match the color of your pants with your mother's hair, she said. She really thought they would look good on him, but her son didn't agree with that one bit. Your hair is beautiful, mother. I would have even preferred if I was born with red hair like yours. But I am not under no circumstances wearing those pants. Fine, she said, but you know they don't have your size. At Hishiragi's. We could always order, Naruto said. Ordering clothes costs more, but she will do anything for her son. I got you something, she said, as she brought out her red scarf. Do you like it? It's wonderful, Naruto said, as he took the scarf. Alright, let's go, he said, as he held under her hand, bringing her to the counter so she could pay. Don't you want anything else? She asked. 
No, it's fine. He seems happy today, Takeda, the shop owner said, looking down at the smiling blonde. He should be, his mother just got him something nice, Kushina said, handing out the money for the scarf. This was one of the two shops that he could buy clothes without being heavily overpriced or getting a glare from the owner. This man, Takeda, was really nice towards him. Perhaps it because he knew Kuchina for a long time, seeing that she was buying her clothes from this shop for a long time in her younger days. This was one of the stores that sold Uzumaki in this village. Come back again when you want something else, Takeda said, as both of them nodded and headed off. Not looking where he was going, as he was looking at a scarf, Naruto bumped into someone at the door as he fell over. Watch where you're going, vermin, a man said, as he was middle-aged, short, black hair, fair skin, as he was wearing civilian clothes. Excuse me, said Kushina, as a murderous aura surrounding her. What did you just call my son? I dare you to repeat it, she said, as the man gulped, as he smiled nervously, as he knew if he answered incorrectly, he would not see the light again. Leave it be, Nerda said. This filth is not worth your wrath. Besides, you shouldn't dirt your hand by touching such a despicable monkey. As the fear was quickly replaced by anger in the man when he heard Nerta spoke. What did you just? But Nerta turned and gave the man a glare that made him trip on his words. As Nerta then turned back to his mother. Come on mom, I want to show you the progress I made on Silo taught me. As he didn't give her the chance to glare at the man once more as he started to draw her away. Slow down Naruto, Kushina said. Sorry, he apologized. As Kushina shrugged it off, I am surprised that you're making good progress with your Fuinjutsu. Well, this confirms one thing. You're my son. As Naruto smiled, Fuinjutsu was an art that his mother did better than anyone else in the village. Minato may have been hailed as a master, but everything that he learned was taught to him by Kushina. He just created a few of them, but most of them were taught to him by Kushina. As Naruto wants his mother to be proud of him, by excelling in Fuinjutsu. Two days later, both Naruto and Kushina were at the house. As they were back home, this was the house that Minato left them with. Even though they visit mostly to the Uchiha compound, this was their house. This is what belongs to them. As the both of them were eating dinner. Something's wrong? Kushina asked. As she looked at Naruto to see the look on his face, he wanted to say something. Itachi wanted to take me as his apprentice. In the Anvu. Kushina frowned slightly. He wants you to join Anvu? But I turned that down, Nerta said. He pointed out that following him was a good opportunity for me to learn. And I don't have to necessarily join Anvu. Wouldn't you rather join the academy? Asked Kushina. Nerta simply nodded. And that meant one thing. He was going to tell Itachi that he couldn't do it. But he wasn't looking forward to join the academy either. As he saw Kakashi fail many academy graduates. And they didn't graduate as real shinobi but just hopeful, playing ninjas. Once they were done eating dinner, Kushina went to wash the plates as Naruto followed behind her as he placed the plates into the cupboard once she was done washing them. Have you considered making friends your own age, Naruto? Naruto shook his head as it didn't take long for him to say no. The only friend I need is you. It was good to see how much her son cared about her, but you need to make friends your own age, Naruto. I thought you would get along with Sasuke. But all of that went down the drain when he was jealous of you spending time with his brother. As Naruto tilted his head, why is making friends that important? Even I have friends Naruto, and I do have a friend now. A friend is someone you laugh with, someone you can depend on, like me and Sasuke's mother. But I laugh and depend on you, Naruto said, making Kushina sigh. This will have to do another day. This was a long day and she needed to rest. Once they finished doing the dishes, they went towards the living room but they didn't stay there for long. Want me to read you a bedtime story? She asked. I'm too old for that, Nerta said. While he liked to be showered with affection from his mother, he wanted her to see him as a grown up, not just a 7 year old. Kids these days. Let's get you to bed, shall we? She said. As she watched as Naruto went into bed, as she tucked him in, as a sad smile came on her face. I imagine that your father would be here. The both of us would tuck you in together, she said quietly. While I carry you, I thought that we would have been the perfect family. Me, you, and Minato Baka, she said. As that made Naruto hate that Uchiha even more. He was the one that spoiled their family. You have raised me well and taken care of me. If they gave award for best mothers, you would have get the highest award, Naruto said. 
You're the best, and I couldn't have asked for a better mom than you. As Kushner turned with a sad smile, as he then vanished and turned into a warm smile towards her son. I am sorry that you were forced to grow up so fast, Naruto. I wish you had a lot of friends and play with kids in the park. Naruto's eyes started close. He may have grown fast, but his mind, his body still needed rest. As I said before, you're the best mom. It doesn't matter, Naruto said. As Kushina smiled and kissed him on the forehead. Good night, Sashi. Good night, mom, he said. As she headed off. Time skip. It was now midnight. As Naruto got out of bed, he felt like something was wrong. As he started to walk through the dark corridor. As he arrived at his mother's room, as she was crying. This had happened before. The first time he found out about this was when he was at age 4. That is when he decided to never cry again. Seeing that his mother was crying, he wouldn't waste and cry either. He would be there to comfort her. And he has never shed a single tear since then. As Naruto walked over to see her holding a picture of her and Minato, as sometimes Naruto get very angry as he wants to burn every picture of Minato. One man dying always make his mother feel so sad and that brought up some negative emotion. Before he hated Konoha, he hated Minato for leaving his mother as he died to save these ungrateful bastards that doesn't deserve it. As Naruto walked over and took the picture of him as he threw it away, as he went into bed and comforted her, as her crying slowed down until she stopped crying completely as the both of them fell asleep. The next morning, Naruto said goodbye to his mother. Kushina would spend most of her days at the Yamanaka flower shop or sometime hang out at the park with Mikato or him. As Naruto took the back door, as he was going to the Uchiha compound, he saw a man harvesting the garden that he and his mother he and his mother worked so hard on as he was stealing vegetables. You people are truly baboons. You have always, always managed to prove me right that you people are nothing but disgusting worms. The man who was in his mid-thirties as he had long black hair turned. What did you just call me? As Naruto pulled out a kunai, as the man narrowed his eyes at Naruto. As Naruto then started to walk forward until he turned into a jog. But then an Anbu appeared. I will take him to Anko, he said holding on to the man. I don't like to be tempted like this, Naruto said. As he knew the Anbu was watching, to see what his reaction would be before stepping in. As the Anbu disappeared in a swirling leaf with the man. As Naruto pocketed the kunai, as he headed off to his direction. At the Uchiha compound, the walking through the Uchiha compound was calm, as they understand them there, as he had no fear of someone trying to attack him there. Naruto said Mikato, as Naruto was outside the house and so was her. Please come in, she said. Despite he was familiar with his house, he always knocked before entering. Thank you, Naruto said. Is your mother still at home? Mikato asked. She should be, Naruto said. As Mikato smiled, Itachi will be coming down in a few minutes. He's getting ready to take Sasuke to the academy. Minutes later, the moment Sasuke saw Naruto, he had requested for Itachi to accompany him to the academy. As Mikato had offered to walk him, but Sasuke wanted his brother to walk him. On the way, Sasuke walked on all of Itachi's sides just to ensure Naruto wasn't close. But Naruto didn't care one bit, as he just walked rather calm. After Sasuke went into the academy, Itachi and Naruto went to the Hokage's monument. I can't bear it anymore, Itachi. I cannot continue watching her like this. I know it only happened on a few occasions, but it's it's not something that I can stop, Naruto says as he clenched his fist. My mother doesn't know about it, does she? Asked Itachi. No, Naruto said. Tell her. Only she can help in this situation. I'll speak to her first, Naruto said. In the meantime, step up with my training. I don't care if I have to go home unconscious each day. A few days later, Kushina's house. It was just after noon as Kushina returned from the flower shop. As she was relaxing behind her house in the garden. As she then turned her head. Jiraiya, she said. Hello, Kushina, he said. As he had an uneasy look on his face. As Kushina looked towards him. As she wasn't hostile or anything. But she had an uncaring look on her face. You're not going to make this easy for me, aren't you? I am not making things difficult for you. I am giving you a chance to tell your story. Jiraiya suppressed a strong urge to frown 
as he didn't have any stories he had told all the stories in the past years. He was close to begging now, weeping on his knees so the woman can accept him in Narta's life. Please Kushina, we can't go on like this. I'm truly sorry. If I could go back in time to take a different path, I would. Well, maybe you should try to make the impossible possible, Kushina said. The reason I still talk to you is because you were there when we needed you the most. If you had not been there that day, I wouldn't even speak to you. How could Jerry forget about that day? It was engraved in his spirit and his mind. The day Sarutobi announced Naruto as a Jinjuki of the Kayube, it had been hell itself. He has been never disgusted so much by Konoha people. He has never questioned his loyalty in the village. But that day he questioned everything. When the third announced Naruto as a hero that Konoha made him, everyone had riot. They acted like a pack of hunger wolves and nearly burned down the village. It was that day Konoha stood still. Konoha wanted nothing but to burn down Naruto. As Kushina was in the hospital, as she was tired from the loss of energy and the extraction from the Kayubi. As that day Jiraiya saw, his sensei were the mass of a god. As he walked around the village with Naruto in his arms and an aura oozed off of him. He had dared anyone to attempt anything. He had dared anyone to touch Naruto. As Jiraiya walked beside Sarutobi that day as well. A couple of civilians were executed after they tried to break into the house the day that followed. After trouble had ceased, Kushina was released. Jiraiya then vanished once more. Kushina stood up. I think you would be a good influence on my Naruto. This is why I didn't refuse when you offered to make him sign the Toad contract. However, that will depend on Naruto. If he doesn't want you, I won't force him. Meanwhile, Naruto was going through a book. As he was at the park with that Yamanaka girl, as his mother had made him come here with her saying that who would protect her from bullies. Speaking of her, there she was picking up trouble again. Hey, leave her alone and pick on someone your own size, Ino shouted at the three bullies who were picking on a girl with pink hair because of her rather large forehead. Who's our size, you? One of the boys said, grinning at Ino. Well, no, but leave her alone, Ino said. Oh well, look at that, she wants to join in the fun, another boy said, turning towards Ino. Naruto sighed as he ignored the old thing as he was looking through his Fuinjutsu book. Naruto! Ino called out, but he ignored her. Naruto, a little help! Help! That loser can't help you, look at him. He's nothing but a coward. As he stared down at the corner, Ino. As Ino clenched her fist, Naruto Uzumaki, if you don't come here and help, I will tell that you watch a girl get bullied. Naruto locked his book as he turned. What? He said. Are you just going to watch two girls being bullied by these brutes? Ino shouted. Hey, who are you calling a brute? One of the boy asked. Yes, Nerka said. If you don't come here, as Ino clenched her fist, as she knew he was serious, I, I'll tell your mother, and you know how disappointed she will be. Mother did say that I must watch over her. As Nerka got up and went over to Ino, I thought we had an agreement. Yes, Ino said, but I asked nicely, and you didn't help. What other choice did I have? Beat it trash, unless you want to join into the fun, the boy said. Despite the situation Ino was in, she wasn't afraid. Not as long as Naruto was there. Naruto would make things okay. He always did. One of the boys stepped forward as he placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder. You still alive, he said. He asked in a mocking tone. Seeing that Naruto had yet to say a word, he thought that Naruto was frozen in fear. As Naruto turned and gave the boy a look that made him shrink as he backed away a bit. As the boy looked towards his two friends, as he thought to himself, Mom was right, he's a monster. Come on guys, let's get out of here, as they ran off. As Ino went over to Sakura and helped her up, Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Now was that difficult, Ino said looking at Naruto. No, but I'd rather you don't do something like that again, Naruto said. Th thank you, Sakura said to Naruto. But Naruto simply walked off. Ignore him for now, Ino said. He's like that. Come on, let's go play. Sakura nodded as she went and followed her new friend. As Naruto lay back against a tree as he pulled out his book and continued to study. Kushina came to the park as she saw Naruto the book on his face as he was lying down under the tree. Boo, she said trying to scare him. But Naruto wasn't scared at all as he knew she was coming. Aw, you're no fun anymore, Kushina said. As Naruto smiled, well, well, would you look at that? Mama's boy is smiling inside of his beloved mother, Ino said. 
Are you making fun of my Naruchan? Said Kushna, as Naruto's cheeks quickly turned pink, as Ino heard that name. As Ino started to choke in laughter. As Naruto looked towards her, Ino, a word about this, and I'll make you regret it. Play nice, Naruto, Kushina said. Come on, mom, Naruto said, as he started to pull her away. As Kushina looked behind her, come on, Ino, she said, as Ino was being left behind. Time skip, Naruto, why do you want to learn these things at such a young age? Saratobi said, as both him and Naruto was in the Saratobi clan compound training area. I want to become strong, Gigi, Naruto said. As he was looking up at the sky. Yes, I know that. But wind manipulation isn't the easiest thing you can do at your age, Naruto. Learning wind chakra takes years of hard training and hard work. As you remember his younger days. Well then, if it takes many years, isn't it only right if I start right now, Naruto said. If I start right now, when I reach a more mature age, I will be able to manipulate the element, Naruto said. Well, yes, that will be the most reasonable option, Saratobi said. As that was true. However, that is the kind of thing that Root Anvu will learn at your age, and I don't want to treat you in the same manner. I don't want you to have the same mentality as Root Anvu and endure the same training that Danzo gave them. I really appreciate that, Gigi, Nurta said quietly. You have treated me well over the years. I don't think I can even imagine you treating me like an emotionless robot like how Danzo does with his Root agents. As Nurta know a lot about the inner workings of the village, as Sarutobi, Say things when Naruto was around, as he knew that Naruto wouldn't utter a word to anyone. Kushina also let him see things, as she made him go inside his father's study and he learned about anything and she didn't really say anything about it. She just didn't allow him around the S rank secrets though. But what Danzo did, it wasn't classified as S rank though. I think it's necessary for me to learn all that I can with the environment around me, Naruto said. I do not disagree with your assessment. But you should mind your age. Other children allow their parents to protect them, but you have it the other way around. Naruto got up from the ground as he recovered enough energy from the Taijutsu training that Saratobi was teaching him. He couldn't learn Taijutsu from Itachi because Itachi Taijutsu went along with the Sharingan. And he didn't have those eyes, so the style wouldn't suit him. As Naruto sat carefully, his legs crossed, looking at Saratobi. I feel like you're saying I'm acting like an adult instead of being a child. But you forget that the father is always the head of the house. But I don't have that. As Saratobi shook his head slightly. I can never forget that you don't have that Naruto. But your mother is not a civilian. She's a retired Jonin. Don't you always brag about her superior knowledge when you get the chance? Still, I do what I must. If father was here, things would be different, Naruto said. As Saratobi nodded with a small frown. It is unfortunate that Minato passed away at a such young age. He could have done better than I could have. Maybe or maybe not, Nerda said. Possibilities are always there. You have your experience to count on. Your physical ability may be deteriorating, but your mind hasn't. So it is still arguable. Nevertheless, it is indeed cruel that he pathetically died. He didn't pathetically die, Naruto, said Saratobi. No matter how many times you have to say to get through Nerda's head, he died a noble death. Have you ever questioned yourself what you would do in his situation? If someone threatened your mother, you would do anything to save her. It was same as Minato he believed that he was doing the best to save his family and the village and he paid the cost. There are ways he could have gone about that and still be alive. Giving away his life wasn't a necessity. The only thing that Naruto resented about Minato was that he died. He didn't resent anything else. The thought that he died instead of living hurt Naruto a lot more than he was willing to admit. He wanted his father to be there to protect him and his mother. He wanted his father to stand up for his family. What made matters worse was that the very people that Minato died for, they were hating his very son. Hirson spoke, breaking out from his thoughts. Your mother told you, didn't she? The seal that Minato used, it is to make you use the Kayubi Chakra. The seal that was on Mito and your mother was holding it back. But the seal that you have is able to make you tap into that power. What if your father believed that the Uchiha would one day return back to Konoha again? The fact that the Uchiha is still alive means that your father failed to kill him. What if the best way he thought to protect his family and Konoha was to give you the Kayubi's power? Wouldn't that explain why he chose you and that seal specifically? Despite your mother argues. Naruto clenches fists. I have thought about that possibility. 
but nothing can take away from what he did. But he made us experience, Nurka said. As a third, smiled sadly. Minato, just trusting the villagers to see you as a hero, but he was wrong. A part of me thought they would, which is why I honor his wish to tell them of your status. Nevertheless, I believe your father trusted you, his own son to protect his wife and the village from the enemy he could not defeat. His hopes may have been crushed, but I honestly believe he gave you that power to protect what he holds dear. That is why he chose to die while you live. This is why I will teach you, so Minato other wishes can come true. So Naruto, what do you think of the academy? Do you want to join it and probably make some new friends? Asked Sarutobi. As Naruto sit there with a thoughtful look on his face. But guys, we end this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this or know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn that bell notification to stay posted. Remember to share all of your friends in your social media platform and stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming your way. And I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. But for now, I'm out of here. Peace.